today from Davenport, Iowa, where old-time gambling ships roam the beautiful banks of the mighty Mississippi. We bring you a high horsepower version of roulette. It's the top mud racers in the world trying their hand with Lady Luck. Coming up next, we'll see who's dealt the winning hand in this dirty game. This is Trucks and Tractor Power, featuring the all-stars of the four-wheel and off-road Jamboree Quad Cities Nationals. Welcome to Trucks and Tractor Power on the Nashville Network. Today we bring you the four-wheel and off-road Jamboree Quad Cities Nationals from the Mississippi Valley Fairgrounds in Davenport, Iowa. Hey guys, I'm over here. I'm over here in line to get some ice cream before the mud racing competition begins. Now I'd buy some for Army, but he only eats cheeseburgers. And speaking of food, these guys have a sweet tooth for horsepower. And they get it a couple of ways, with supercharging and nitrous oxide. And here with more on that is the old taste tester himself, Army Armstrong. Hey Army, if I have a chance, I'll get you a cheeseburger on the way over. Well Gary, make sure my cheeseburger's plain. For all you guys standing in the Gary Lee line to get ice cream right now, keep an eye on him, man. He may try to talk you out of a nickel or dime so he can buy his own ice cream. Speaking of nickel and dime, these guys are always nickel and diming each other, trying to figure out how to get the most horsepower out of their vehicle. And there's kind of been two train of thoughts on that. Right now, we're going to talk about those two trains of thoughts. One of them is a nitrous train of thought. The other one is a supercharger or blown motor. The supercharger or blown motor right here to my right it's kind of a proven concept behind it. You have a supercharger here, basically nothing more than a way to force more air into the engine. As you well know, it takes three things to make horsepower. Fuel, which comes from the fuel injector, air, which will come from the supercharger, and ignition, which takes place down in the motor. Now, this is a tried and true way. All the racers have used it in drag racing and been very, very successful with it. But in the sport of mud racing, a few years ago, technology came out, and the guys thought they may have found a new trick, a new handle, if you will. It's called nitrous oxide, laughing gas. And the way that works is very simple. The fuel still goes into the engine, but the nitrous, which goes through these lines right here, puts the oxygen in a condensed form. So the fuel mixes with the oxygen and gives you an instant horsepower. And that's what's proved to be a little bit of a problem because the horsepower you get from this engine is a different kind of horsepower than you get from a blown motor. The guys that have tried the nitrous are finding out that it's an instant horsepower. It'll just grab you and throw you to the other end. You don't really have any control over it. So, what they're finding out is they're going back to where they came from. A lot of the drivers are going back to the blower motors or the supercharged motors because that horsepower is more controllable. Back to you, Gary. I mean, thanks for that explanation, but see if I ever take up a collection to buy you anything at the concession stand. Well, as we take a look at the track, look at the collection of ruts. Because earlier in the day, they ran the paddle tire class, and that tears up the track just a bit. These will be the cut tires in the Class 5 Open Unlimited. 180 feet of mud, a single pass, the best time wins it here in Davenport. You're looking at Dave Ryan, driver of Intrepid, and before the start of today's competition, Army was over at his trailer where we discovered Dave drives one of the more sophisticated mud racing vehicles. Well, believe it or not, Gary, what you're looking at is a computer printout that came off one of the mud racers. No, it's not your home mortgage. you still got a few payments to make on that, but Dave Ryan out of Florida came up, and he's gone high-tech in the sport of mud racing. Dave... Real quick, uh, we just kind of bumped in you back here reading the uh, printout. Why are you using a computer? Well, normally after every run, we don't usually know what happens with the motor other than reading the plugs or the bearings. And now with the computer, with some help from Dario Donovan from Cygnus Computers, we can tell every tenth of a second the, the fuel pressure, the blower pressure, the gear ratio, the clutch slippage, each cylinder temperature on all eight cylinders. And in just one run, we can detune the motor or tune the motor up. But it really tells us everything we want to know, and it, it helps us a great deal, and we're Pretty sure it's going to speed things up next year. Well, you know, it's kind of interesting. And, Gary, you know, a lot of people might think that the sport of mud racing is redneck. Uh-uh. High-tech. Back to you, Gary. And there's a look now at that high-tech 23 Altered T Intrepid. Dave Ryan with a good look at that inverted air scoop. Well, you know, forward. that's interesting. He runs a supercharged engine. You just pointed out the inverted scoop. Mike Yosha, on the other hand, in the other lane, will run a nitrous oxide assisted engine. Crew chief goes out, turns the computer on. You can see him walking around. They get ready to go up, but you got to remember that air scoop turn around back backwards will really not affect the vehicle because these runs are about three seconds long. They hope, hope can, the run is three yeah, seconds long. You can hold your breath that long, I guess, to make an engine. I think run. I could. Once again, Intrepid 
against hyperactive. Nitrous oxide with hyperactive. Supercharged engine with Intrepid, Gary. They're lining up side by side. And it's all the supercharged Intrepid. A good ride. Oh, Whoa, problem nitrous. over there. Boy, the, the nitrous. We told you in the earlier about how nitrous gives you instant horsepower. Well, with the short wheelbase and the instant horsepower, he was just along for the ride. He's lucky he didn't take that concrete wall. Yeah, Yosha got in trouble in hyperactive. You can see him hit the nitrous right here. He gets out of shape. Almost collects the concrete wall, slams the timing light. Other than that, though, straight as an arrow. Yeah. And so he is disqualified. And there is even a better look at Dave Bryan in Intrepid, the supercharged 23 Alter T with the Keith Black Hemi. And let's take a look at his run one more time. We told you about the two types of horsepower, and the supercharged horsepower in the near lane is just more controllable. And that run for Dave comes in at a 317. So right now he'll be on top of the leaderboard and he's standing by with Army. Dave, we just get the word a 317. How does that make you and your crew chief feel? Uh, not too good. It didn't go that fast, but uh, we're working on it with our new crew chief, Kenny Thompson here. We're getting a bug work out of it. We just get it hooked up and it'll do a little bit better. We got plenty of power, just can't put it to the ground. Well, he's the standard bearer right now as we take a look at Fred Wilhite, the driver of the money pit. He's coming up when we return on Trucks and Tractor Power. Welcome back to Davenport, Iowa, where Ford Trucks present the Penda four-wheel and off-road Jamboree Quad Cities Nationals, a part of the BF Goodrich Performance Series. And there's a look at Bob Glidden's Pro Stock Dragster, part of the Ford Motorsports display. And now it's time to go back to the pit and there's a look at the money pit, the 48 Fiat with Fred Wilhite. Well, those of you that follow motorsport know the 48 Fiat for years dominated the sport of drag racing. However, Fast Freddy brought this one over to go mud racing. Now, earlier in the day, he ran in the paddle tire class and took, well, you just take a look at yourself. It was a bouncy ride. Yeah, he was all over that lane up against Intrepid with Dave Ryan running at a smooth pass. But Freddy was all over that shutdown area. I think at the end of the day, it was timing light zero, Freddie one. Out of Columbus, Indiana, there is Tony Alt in the Little Miss Dangerous 1978 CJ5 fiberglass Jeep. Both of these vehicles are fiberglass replicas. We talked about the 48 Fiat, you talked about the late model Jeep. They're going against the clock. They let the pit go out. Not the run he was looking oh, for. Problem for Fred right there, just before he got the timing light. A problem for both of these drivers. 4.15 oh, yeah. for Fred and a disqualification for Tony Alt. Let's take another look. On the right lane, Fred gets off to a good start. Tony Alt will actually get out of his lane right here. He's disqualified. But near the timing light, Fred gets in trouble again. Not sure what that problem is, but he's back to the pit area. And let's go track side with Army Armstrong. Fred, a 4.15. Uh, everybody seems to be having a problem putting the horsepower to the track. I hooked about half track real good, but I shucked everything this time. Uh, I don't know what I broke yet, but I've got no drive of any kind, front or rear. So that was a very expensive run for you. I did strain my motor up about past nine grain. I don't know what's broke underneath. 